Conducting surgery on the a 9 E12 today. Welcome to today's 3D print. And this is the carriage plate. I super glued it together so I could remove the three bolts on each side that held together. As you can see, it's three pieces. You have those two pieces on left and right, and a bridge in the middle. And this bridge in the middle is the problem. It is too thin. I can bend this with one hand and put an arc in it. And that's really bad for 3D printing. So I made a new one out of aluminum. This is a three millimeter thick or eighth inch aluminum plate. I discovered it does not need to be 12 by 12. It needs to be like 11 by whatever that is. So later on, I'll trim this down, but I don't have the tools to trim it down right now. So it's going in whole. The problem is the belt, the guide rails, the slides, the linear slides, bearings, and the bed all mount to this. So it has to be right. So what I did, was I mounted it approximately where I wanted it, centered left and right, and flush with one end, and then used a Sharpie to mark the two holes through the existing holes, drilled them. Then I took some, I believe these are three millimeter, what is that? Yes, some M318s, I believe, or something like that, and I dropped them through here and bolted it into place, which now locked it on there. I then used this as my drilling template, drilled those two holes, put two more bolts in, which pulls the whole thing flat, because you have to remove these. This is why I super glued it together, because I had to remove these little bolts that were holding these parts together, because um, I want this to lay flat, so I can use this as a drilling guide. You then need to drill these four holes at each location. This was an eighth inch drill bit for the four corners. This was a 5 seconds inch drill bit, I believe. Yes, 5 seconds inch drill bit for the bearing block holes. This is probably slightly smaller, but I made it that size anyway, since I don't have a threading tool, so I'm going to nut and bolt it. So I'll just slide the bolt through, which is this piece right here. If it'll let me, and then I will nut it on the other side. Although I just realized that might not work. That could be a problem. We'll see. It looks like this is designed to go in a certain length and be pinned and I just changed that. So I might have to actually put bolts in there and make a little bearing block for that center thing here. We'll see. Um, but we will go from there. And now I don't need this anymore. And now I have this. It's time to reassemble the printer and see if I can level the bed now that I have a nice thick aluminum plate. This was 16 bucks. I think it was $32 for two of them because I got one for the Tron XY as well. More to come. Um, the plate sitting on top of the bearing blocks sits too low. One of the reasons for the cutouts here besides losing weight is that it clears this and it clears the bearing pulley in the back, the gear pulley for the Y-axis stepper motor. So what I did was I replaced these garbage screws that it comes with, with some proper M4 cap screws. These are 12 millimeter long so that I could use M5 nuts as washers, raising the build plate up just a little bit like that. To do that, I grabbed these with a pair of pliers like this and fed them underneath as I fed the cap screws through the bed I got all of them installed and then tightened them up and now my bed is good to go. I also had to bend this down just a hair because this just barely hit that and now it doesn't hit it. So this is temporary of course. I'm probably going to leave them like they are but eventually I do want to cut off this excess just because it's extra mass. This doesn't have to haul around and I might drill some holes through here to lighten this up a little bit. Um... Unless it prints fine like it is, then I'll just leave it alone. But I do want to cut that back part off so it's not so heavy. And that's it. I am now going to figure out how to get the pulley installed again on this board. And go from there. I shall return. What I have here is now two new posts. And they go through here like this. Right there. What you have is just this. So first I slide the belt onto here, then I put this nut on, but not all the way down to the belt. I then slide this 
through the bottom of the plate, put the second nut on top, and then the trick is you have to tighten the two nuts. You can't tighten it with the, the cap screw part because that will just turn the screw through both nuts evenly since they're both the same thread pitch. You have to put a pair of pliers on this nut and put a pliers or wrench on that nut and you have to cross tighten them and so that they pinch. So you hold this one tight in the other one and it'll pinch down. And now I have my bed attached. This might actually be strong enough since it is a three millimeter thick hunk of aluminum. Later on I'll come in here with a proper set of wrenches and tighten it up good, but I think it'll be good. Or even a lock nut might do it. But here I give you a better view of my spaced setup here. So just that these are just sitting there loose. Well they're tight now of course, but they're five millimeters so they are not threaded onto the bolts and 12 millimeter for M4s through the bed and we are now reattached. This is loose because I loosened this to make it easy to do. So now I'll tighten it up and get the heat bed reinstalled with the AnyCubic um, Ultra Base and we shall get this thing going again. You know something? I might leave this little extra bit on back here. Maybe just shave it down a little bit, but I realized I could put a hole through there and put another stand off there. And now when I plug the heat bed in, I have a place to zip tie this heat bed cord to for strain relief. Even though the plug itself is strain relief, now I can zip tie it there and keep that plug from being tweaked. So I'm going to leave that. There we go. It's amazing how much easier it is to get a printer to actually work correctly <laughs> when you have a solid, stiff... Y carriage plate for it to ride on. Now it doesn't warp, it leveled easily. I did have to add a three millimeter shim to lift my, I bent the little lever switch up, but that wasn't enough. So I added a, an additional three millimeters. So I'm probably got like six or seven millimeters of boost on my end stop for my Z axis to clear the thicker plate, the spacers, and the any cubic. But now it's working good. So you guys later will get to see the finished product of this. That's it. I will report back. There we go. First print after first major print after all the stuff is done. 13 hour print. And this is the any cubic ultra base. So the parts just come right off. No fuss. They just pop right off. Even the skirts just come right off. No tools needed. So this is going to be that giant noisemaker thingy that Joel Telling showed on his channel. So hell yeah, I'm going to make one. <laughs> That's it, more to come. Alrighty, so I am going to try to replace the hot end shroud unit with one from the E10, since I believe this is identical. I did notice this only has two screws holding this on. That's interesting. But we're going to get rid of that and use this. So I've taken out these two screws, I've loosened these screw screws, and I've taken out those screws. So this should come off now. Yep, and it is nut and bolt, that's what I feared. So now we loosen all these up. I pull this out to catch all the screws. Okay, metal shroud gone. It should be largely plug and play. This should come right off. It's actually a nice little duct, but yeah, I like this one better. Yep, same thing. It's identical. I thought it would be. Okay, don't forget to capture your wiring here. There we go. Just had to make the hole a tiny bit bigger. Not a big deal. This route is made by CNC Kitchen. If you do a search for him on Thingiverse, I'll have a link down below. Um, this is for the E10. But as I suspected, it's identical for the E12. They use the exact same components. This will fit here, and this will fit here. Just like that. 
beautiful. Very, very nice. I'm going to pause for a minute so you don't have to watch me put all these screws in. And there we go. New hot end is installed. We need to close up the bat. Come on. There we go. That's pretty cool. It fit. I just had to make that hole a tiny bit bigger. It was off by like half a millimeter. But there you go. The E10 custom hot end that um, CNC Kitchen made fits on the E12 perfectly.